Um, I'm currently studying a PhD um, and I'm looking at commercial sector archaeology and community engagement. So what I thought I'd first do is give you a little background about myself and introduce me you know, to everyone and then just move on to the research and some other stuff. So I actually am one of the few, I don't know how many people out there, but I did the A-level. <laughs> and I, don't, I think they're bringing it back or they're, really look at, they're looking at rejigging it somehow. And I really enjoyed the A-level, so if you've got any people looking at A-levels, I say, do the A-level. Um, I then went on to the University of Southampton, same class as Hayley actually, so it's nice to follow. Um, and then I took a few years out and returned to uh, academia in 2013 and did something completely different, which was the Mesolithic Studies Masters, and I'm now doing a PhD at the University of Bradford, funded by the Heritage Consortium, and it's just looking. So in my time away from academia, um, <laughs> I'm glamour, glamourful picture, uh, <laughs> life in a high-vis jacket, I did work for commercial sectors archaeology, and it was then that I really started to see the difference between the academic side and the commercial sector side. And this is where my idea for my PhD has grown from. Because one of the things that happened was that when I worked in the commercial sector, I was mistaken for a developer, a builder, a council employee. Um, and all these um, interactions with the public were very, very interesting because they obviously had a point to get across to me but they had a point to get across to the me that they thought I was, not the me that I actually was. And as soon as I explained, oh, I'm an archaeologist, I'm here, I'm digging, not like on the telly, is it? <laughs> um, so I think that feeds into the one part of archaeology, which is what do we want the public to think of us as. But it also feeds into this very other side of archaeology, which is archaeology is pre preserved by record for the benefit of the public and future generations. This is the point of commercial sector archaeology. And I think that if you, as far as you go back, um, even to kind of the 70s, and you're reading stuff about rescue archaeology, this is the reason why, why we, kind of, we kind of do it. We love it, and we think that it's really, really important, and we want to pass it on. But then why doesn't anybody know about my profession? <laughs> like, why don't they know about me? So I continued thinking about it for a while, and <laughs> for a long time, and came up with the idea that perhaps the best thing to do is start at the very beginning and have a look at what commercial companies are actually doing at the moment to engage the public. Um, and actually get uh, an overview of what the profession is doing. Not where it could be going, not what it's done in the past, but what's actually happening now. Um, so I'm hoping to look at why is it being done? Who are the main players and why is it being done? As Hayley was saying, is it interest groups? Is it the community? Is it something the commercial company has decided that they're, that's their thing? They're going to do it. If, if they're um, employed by a developer, then they have to do outreach of some sort. Um, and how is it being done? What are the things that are working? What are the activities? What are, what are the engagement levels that are really getting people into archaeology? And another thing. What is the impact on the communities? A massive thing that I've been finding with my research is that, oh, we didn't start evaluating this, or clear aims weren't set, so we can't properly evaluate this at the moment, which I'm finding really difficult because then you're getting hindsight kind of views and evaluation of aims that weren't properly given at the beginning. Okay. <laughs> um, so the pre preliminary research started with, just with websites. All I did was I looked at the CIFA website and I went, these are the organizations that are registered to CIFA, and I checked every single one of their websites to see who was doing engagement. So the yes, which is fantastic because it's over 50% over of commercial companies on there, or organizations, I shouldn't say they're all commercial, are doing engagement. <coughs> and that is, from the website, very, very obvious. They are doing the engagement. They have things that you, they have links that will take you to it. They are, um, they have flyers or they have a Twitter feed set up with a specific hashtag. They go in depth. The option section are companies that mention that they have the sphere to do commercial, uh, to do community engagement in the commercial sector, but don't actually, but haven't actually advertised any of their projects, any of the community projects that they may have done. I can't say they have or haven't done it. So that was the option. 
it's an optional extra if you're someone to, to have that. And the no is that it's not even mentioned on the website, public, outreach, education, or community. Those are kind of the keywords that I'm looking for. And not, it's not even mentioned on the website. So that's the first look at the commercial sector. But on the other side, obviously, I'm doing a PhD, so I kind of have to look at the academic side. Oh, my head in shame. Oh, I don't know what I've done. I broke it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't believe that my dad was a computer engineer. <laughs> Alice, here's a computer. You can't break it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I want to go forward. Thank you. So, there is a lot of academic discussion about community archaeology. And it's all centered, and these are the key themes, the authoritative voice, the curation of knowledge. It sounds like I'm doing a, you know, a, a, a film theme and the effect on the discipline. Now, I don't mean to be horrible, and this is gonna be this is a controversial moment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> disclaimer, disclaimer, all thoughts are my own. When they talk about the discipline, they don't talk about the discipline as a whole, they just mean the academic side. So the authoritative voice is the academic side of the authoritative voice. The curation of knowledge is how academics feel about how they pass on knowledge. And the effect on the discipline is how this will impact on academics. Yeah, so there's very, very little about how this will actually impact on the commercial side, on people who, you know, gain their living from developer funded work and are now kind of looking at doing community engagement and a lot of the things that Haley was saying are, are, are very very relevant so that kind of is annoying um, generally as well there's not a lot of academic literature on commercial archaeology which is interesting considering your like commercial archaeology is meant to be part of a discipline but you know okay and there's also not a lot of academic literature on archaeology and heritage. I'm funded by a heritage body. A lot of funding for community archaeology comes from Heritage Lottery Fund. So I don't understand how there's not enough spoken about the relationship between archaeology and heritage. Um, and I think that that is something that needs to be explored. I don't know how much, how much I will be able to explore it, but yeah. And this, heritage wants to align itself with public interests and it's moving towards this idea, yet another word, co-production. So, um, and I think this then becomes something, if you're, if you're reading it, if you're keeping up with any of the kind of things going on, the Faro Convention is, is very pertinent at the moment. And it's also very of the times within kind of the politics and there's this big move to say that heritage is a positive is a force for positiveness and it is not to be used in a way that can split apart communities which at the moment is something you know that it can be used for and has been used for in the past and it's very important that moving forward that we do it in a way that joins up people and doesn't and hopefully doesn't push people out. And that can be really, really difficult because who's to decide what is a positive way to move forward? Um, and I guess that's where the co-production comes in because isn't that a choice? If heritage is for everybody, if archeology span is for everybody, then isn't it now the time that we include everybody in deciding what we should do with it? Um, So what am I hoping for the outcomes? I just, I want to understand the level of engagement that's currently going on. So that's the, that's one of the outcomes I'm hoping for my 
for their research. I want more community engagement. The, these are the things <laughs> I want. <laughs> I want the community to be engaged. I, well, I love archaeology. I love heritage. I think it's really, really important. I think it can be used in a fantastic way in lots of different mediums to bring people together. And I think a lot of the community engagement projects show that, that even if certain activities haven't worked or certain things haven't happened, the feedback is always, I got to meet people that I would never have met before. I got to engage with people that I would never have engaged with. And I think that's really, really important. Boost archaeology's profile. We are not a self-sustaining discipline. We rely on money from the outside, from the public. Um, and if we're not going to be giving back, then we're going to be losing out. We're currently in a very interesting situation, I think, politically, socially, economically. And unless we prove that there is value within heritage and we start educating people to show that there is value, I think that's the important thing, is educating people that there is value in heritage, that they can find worth in it, then we're going to have a lot of trouble in the future. And then build a stronger discipline. We are fractured, we are split. You can use any other word you want to to describe it. There is a massive gap and there is massive disparities between what different what the different parts of archaeology want. And I think if we if we want to go forward and we want a positive future and we want to survive, we have to start pulling together and we have to start working together. So what I'm hoping is through the research, it's maybe just saying there is this gap and we need to start addressing it. And hopefully, I mean, I don't have all the answers, <laughs> same as Haley. I don't have, I'm hoping for solutions, but you can't, you can't always find them and you can't always find things that everybody agrees on either. But hopefully, if we can build a stronger discipline, then we shall take over the world. <laughs> Harmoniously forever. Um, but if you are interested in any of my work, I'm on, I have a Heritage Consortium. Check out the Heritage Consortium website. They have um, PhD <coughs> studentships. I think they've just done the second round and they also fund masters. Um, I also have a Bradford, a research Bradford profile. Um, and that's my email address and that's my Twitter handle, so you can abuse me on Twitter. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But yeah, and um, that's me, done. Thanks.